Hello, my little mathematicians. Today, I'm going to help you go through um, the ratios study guide. So let's go ahead and look at this first section. Um, we're going to use this table up at the top to help us answer these questions. Um, it's probably not going to be as obvious in the future that like, you know, they want plums to apples and they're all bold like that. So look for that word like they want the ratio of this to that. Whatever they say first is what's going to go on top. OK, and whatever they say um, second after the word two is going to go on bottom. So we want plums to apples. Plums, if we look right here, they had 23 and apples, they had 50. Can I reduce that fraction? Sure can't. So I'm done. And I said fraction because a ratio is a fraction. Um, remember, it's always best if you try them yourself, like pause the video, try them yourself and then um, go ahead and unpause it and come back and join with us. And you can also just fast forward to the ones that you specifically needed help on. Okay, number two, it wants the ratio of beets to carrots. So beets is on top and carrots is on the bottom. So I look up at my table up here and for carrots, there was 27. So that goes on the bottom because that's where carrots are. And beets, there was 18. And then ask yourself, can I reduce that fraction? Well, um, this one's not even, so two can't go into both, but always double check for three. That's the one that always gets forgotten about. <laughs> and yes, three can go into both of those. And 18 divided by three is six, and 27 divided by three is nine. And you're still not done because I can reduce it by three again. And six divided by three is two, and nine divided by three is three. Now I'm finally done because that can't reduce anymore. And some of you guys divided by nine, and so you just didn't have to do it twice. You got there faster because 18 divided by nine is two, 27 divided by nine is three. So the bigger number you choose, the faster you get there. Okay, this next one wants vegetables to fruits. And you're like, okay, what does that mean? Well, it's all the vegetables. So if I look here at the vegetable section, that's the beets, the carrots, and the peppers compared to the fruit section, which is all of these guys up here. And for the fruits, there was 50, 65, and 23. So let's go ahead and type this into our calculator. Okay, I got 50 plus 65 plus 23, I got 138. Okay, um, 18 plus 27, typing it in, plus 30, I got 75. Okay, now I look to see if it can reduce. Well, uh, this is even, but this is not. Five can go into this, but not this. Let's test for three. Um, seven plus five is 12, and three can go into 12. So I know three can go in evenly to that. One plus three is four. Four plus eight is 12. So three can go into 12. Okay, three can go into both of these numbers. So let's go ahead and divide that. My calculator. Okay. Um, 138 divided by 3, I got 46. And 75 divided by 3, I know is 25. Now, the only factors of 25 is 5 and 5. And 5 can't go into this. So I know I'm done. Whew, that one was tough. You got that. Good job. Okay, my next one, they want dairy to vegetables. Well, I just solved the vegetables one, and I knew that that was a total of 75, so I can just use that. And for dairy, that's these guys, the milk and cheese, so 12 plus 27. And when I type in 12 plus 27, okay, I got 39, and that's over 75. Now, I know 3 can go into that, and if you didn't, 3 plus 9 is 12. 3 can go into 12, so I know 3 is going to go evenly into this. And... Um, I know that three can go into 75. So let's go ahead and reduce that down. Um, three times 13 is 39. And three times 25 is 75. Uh, 13 is prime and it can't go evenly into this. So I'm done. Okay. Um, oranges to other fruit. Okay. I think this one's going to require a little bit of thinking. Oranges first, let's start there. That one's easier. So if I look up at oranges, there was 65 for the oranges. And then other fruit, do I include the oranges or not include the oranges? It's all the other fruit except for the oranges, so don't include it. 
I'm only going to do the apples and the plums. So 50 plus 23 is 73, and you have 65 on top. Um, okay, 5 can't go into both, 2 can't go into both, 3 can't go into that. I'm done. Okay, um, next one. Remember, you can slow down or speed up the video, and you can even fast forward to the ones you need help with. I have all vegetables, which we've done earlier. That was 75. And then peppers, there was 30. Okay, uh, just by looking at that, I know three can go in there and three can go in there. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, 30 divided by three is 10, and 75 divided by three is 25. Can I reduce it again? Yeah, by what? You guessed it, five. So then what's your final answer? Hopefully you said two over five. And that's as far as you can go. If you're doing great on these, good job. Those are pretty tough. This next section, um, it wants three other ratios that are equivalent to these guys. So you have four over five, okay? So if you could reduce it, you could reduce it, but that can't reduce anymore. So then another thing you could do Technically, when you're reducing, you're dividing both the top and bottom by the same number, right? Well, you also can multiply the top and bottom by the same number to create an equivalent ratio. So if I just multiplied them both by two, what do you get? Eight tenths. And if you're like, how can you do that? Well, if I multiply both the top and the bottom by two, that's essentially multiplying by two over two, which is really just one. And if you multiply any number times one, isn't that technically the same number? Yeah. So I'm just rewriting or representing four fifths in a different way. I'm rewriting it as eight tenths. Okay. And I can do that for any number. Like you can multiply both the top and bottom by three or by four or by five, whatever your little heart desires. The easiest thing is like to do 10 because <laughs> then you just add a zero on. So now it's 40 over 50. So if you ever have to create equivalent ratios, 10 is a really nice one. And then pick whatever you want for the third one. Uh, I just want to keep it easy on myself. So as long as you multiply the same thing on both the top and the bottom, it will be equivalent. And as long as you don't make a math there, if you put four times three is 13, yeah, you missed it, okay? Um, but if you do your math correctly, that four times three is 12 and five times three is 15, you're good. Okay, um, this one, 10 over 30, this is what I was talking about where you could multiply or you could divide, um, the top and bottom by the same number. And so then you would get one third. So one third is equivalent to 10 thirtieths. That's what it reduces to. You also like didn't have to divide by 10 right off the bat. Like what if you saw that two could go into both and then 10 divided by two is five and 30 divided by two is 15. Well, five fifteenths is equal to 10 thirtieths because both 10 thirtieths and 5 fifteenths reduce to one third, right? Doesn't 5 fifteenths reduce to one third? It sure does. So these are equivalent to each other. Just like all three of these reduce to four fifths, all three of these ones that you create should reduce to one third. So um, there's nothing else that can like go down for this one. I got the other two. So then what if instead I multiplied by two for both of these? Well, what's 10 times 2? 20. And what's 30 times 2? 60. Now, if you got different values for this, it's okay. Because, you, again, you could have multiplied or divided by any number you wanted as long as you did the same thing to the top and bottom. So as long as all three of these reduce to four-fifths and all three of these reduce to one-third, then no matter what you picked, you're good. Okay. Um, for these ones, I'm probably going to have to write down in front what I'm talking about again. So I'm saying 65 students are in the school band. Okay, so we have a total of 65 students. And um, of those students, we have 31 that are boys. Okay, and I have a ratio that they want to have be boys, so boys on top and girls on bottom. Okay, so boys, they told me there was 31 of them. Did they tell me how many girls there were? Do I put 65 there? 
No, that's the total number of students. So they told me the total and they told me how many boys there were. So then how do I find out how many girls there were? Do I add those? No, because it's the boys plus the girls equal this. So in order to find how many girls there are, I'm going to subtract it, right? And I get 34, uh, 34. So there's 34 girls and 31 boys for a total of 65 students. Perfect. Can I reduce that? Nope. Okay, if you um, had trouble, trouble with this, make sure you try this one first on your own. Okay, so pause it, try it. You unpaused it, you're back with us. We have 42 students. Okay, I'm going to skip to see what they're looking for. They want boys to girls again. Okay, so I'm going to put girls on the bottom. Um, and they said 20 of the students are girls. So I know the girls is 20. They didn't tell me how many boys, but I can kind of do the same thing I did last time. I take the total, I subtract the amount that is girls this time, and then that'll tell me how many boys there were. So two and two. Okay, there's 22 boys for every 20 girls. Now just ask yourself, can I reduce that? Yeah, by two. And so I get 11 over 10. Can that reduce anymore? Nope, you're done. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is I know a trap. A lot of people want to go, oh, 11 tenths is one and one tenths. So the ratio of boys to girls is one and one tenth. Yes, 11 tenths is equal to one and one tenth, but I do not repeat, do not want to write this as my ratio because the top number should be talking about the number of boys. The bottom number should be talking about the number of girls. And it's not one boy for every 10 girls. And it's not like one plus one is two. So there's two boys for every 10 girls. No, it's, it doesn't work that way. Okay. So again, please don't change them to improper, um, improper fractions into mixed numbers. Keep it like this, that this single number is representing the number of boys. And this single number is representing the number of girls. Otherwise, we'll miss them. Okay, moving on. This one says, in three minutes, Katie's heart beat 201 times. Write the unit rate. Okay, so we want to get the denominator to be one, so it matters what I put in the denominator. They want it in beats per minute. So I want minutes on the bottom and beats on top. Okay, so how many beats did it do? 201. And how many minutes? Three. But they want to know the unit rate, so the denominator, one minute. Okay, so how many beats does it do in just one minute? Ask yourself, how did they go from three to one? Yeah, they divided by three. So essentially, when you're asked to find the unit rate, you figure out what they're trying to get to become one. They want the number of minutes to become one. So put that number in the bottom and then divide it by itself because anything divided by itself is one. And I can do that as long as I do the same thing on top. So now when you type in 201 divided by three, you get 67. So it beat 67 times per minute. Perfect. Okay, um, my next one says Benjamin ran five miles in 31 minutes. What is his speed in miles per hour? Okay, so I want miles on top. So there's that. I want five per hours on bottom. So, ooh, tricky. Okay. Um, first, notice how I want hours, and that's not given to me in hours now, is it? So first of all, I need to do minutes to hours. I need to convert that. Well, I know that one hour is equal to how many minutes? Yeah, 60. So use that fact to then figure out, well, how many hours then is 31 minutes? Okay, so I can do that. Let's go towards my unknown and towards my unknown. Um, 60 times what is 31? And actually, you know what? By the time we reprint this, notice how that's not going to be a pretty number. We're going to change that to be 45 so that it works out nicer. Um, so several years, this video will be corrected, and that'll say it's already it's always said 45. Well, it didn't in the first place. Okay, so as of right now, it said 31, and we changed it because we realized that would be horrible math to do. So right here... Now it's saying, how do you go from 60 to 45? Okay, well, it's getting smaller. So we know that we divided. Um, 
And yes, okay, so technically, actually, it's like three fourths, right? So you could say you multiplied it by 0 0.75, which is essentially dividing. Okay, so then multiply this by 0 0.75. And one times 0 0.75 is 0.75. So 45 minutes is um, 0.75 of an hour. That was tough, huh? So then you want to know, okay, let's get this to be in one hour. Well, how do you go from 0.75 to 1? Divide by 0.75. So then divide this by 0.75. What's 5 divided by 0.75? Yeah, you just got this horrible number in your calculator, didn't you? <laughs> um, so it would normally tell you what to round to. Let's just say it wanted to round to the hundredths place. So that's two places out, tens, hundredths. So that would be 6.6. .6. Well, this 6 tells this 6 to go up to a 7. So 6.67 miles per hour. Now, again, normally if there was a problem where like it kept going and going and going, we would tell you specifically what to round to. Okay, so look at that number behind the one you're focusing on. I'm focusing on the one in the hundredths place. And if the one behind it is 5 or above, it'll bump this up one. If the number behind it is 4 below, then this would have stayed a 6. And there you go. That one was really tough. If you missed that, don't worry. I think that's the hardest one on this whole paper. Okay, back to some more decent ones. It says, Hector can get eight tacos for $11.92. What is the unit price? Okay, so unit price is another way of asking for the unit rate, but it's the specific unit rate where it's talking about money per item. So we want to know how much is it per taco. Well, for eight tacos, it's $11.92. So how much is it for one taco? Well, how did you go from eight to one? Yeah, you divided by eight. So divide this by eight and 11.92 divided by eight is $1.49. So this unit price or unit cost is $1.49 per taco. Okay, finally on this page, it says Yasha, Yasha paid $147 after six hours of work. Noah is paid $190 after eight hours of work. Who earns more money per hour? Okay, so we've got Yasha, who her money per hour is $147 over six, and you want to know how much she makes in one hour. So I'm going to divide by six to get that to be one. So then do the same thing on top. When you typed in $147 divided by six, what'd you get? Yeah. $24.50. So that's her hourly rate. Now let's find Noah's hourly rate. Um, okay, so dollars per hour. He gets $190 for every eight hours. So if I want to know how much he makes per hour, what do I need to do? Yeah, divide by eight. So do the same thing on top. And what's 190 divided by eight? Okay, hopefully you got 23.75. Now you have to make the decision, so who's better? Not who's better, but like who earns more? Yeah, Yasha earns more, okay? She gets paid 75 cents more per hour than poor Noah does. Okay, last page of our study guide. Let's see. It says the graph to the right shows the amount of money Darius pays for his cell phone service. Okay, so this is how much money he pays or spends depending upon how many months it's been. So write the unit rate in dollars per month. Okay, so we want dollars per month. Well, since it's the unit rate, I want the denominator to be one. Is that easy to find? Nah, I don't know exactly where it hit at one. So let's use this point value right here. So I know after two months, he paid $50. So then how much is it for one month? Well, how do you go from two to one? Yeah, you divide by two. So do the same thing here. What's 50 divided by two? 25. Now, some of you guys are like, yeah, right here, I could have seen that that was like halfway between zero and 50, so that was 25. Well, yeah, I could see that now, but what if the actual value was like $23.75? Like, I wouldn't know exactly. So use an exact point um, on the graph and then figure it out, like get that one to one, if it's not an obvious point. Okay. Now that I have my unit rate, we can see um, how much will Darius spend after six months? Well, what would be nice is I could use this, like I would multiply then by six to get that, right? So if we have 
money per month. Okay. We know that he makes $25 in one month. So then how much does he make in six months? Well, how do you get from one to six? Yeah, multiply by six. So then do 25 times six, what do you get? That's right, you got $150. However, for this particular one, I actually could have seen that exact point at six. Do you see how he made $150 after six months? Okay, but that doesn't always happen where it hits a nice point. So then you could have used it mathematically to do it. Okay, um, let's look at this one. It says, how much will Darius uh, spend after 15 months? Hmm, that doesn't go up there, so I can't use the graph. And this is why I said it's good to fall back on doing it the proportion way. For those of you that got mad at me on the previous problem, why'd you make me do this when I could have just looked at the graph? Because you can't always look at the graph, children. Okay, <laughs> so for this one, you know, 15 months wasn't on the graph, but months is on the bottom. So let's put 15 here to represent months. And then I can figure out how much money he'll pay after that amount of time. So how, always go towards the direction of your unknown. So go this way. How do you get from one to 15? Yeah, that's right. You multiply by 15. So do the same thing on top. And 25 times 15 is 375. So he'll spent $375 after um, 15 months. This next one, we're going to use this table to help, help us figure it out. It says write the unit rate in dollars per t-shirt. Okay, so dollars per shirt. Okay, um, essentially I can use any of these ones from the table that I want. So I'll just pick the first one. They said it's $11.25 for five shirts. So then if you want to know how much it is for one shirt, how do you get from five to one? That's right, divide by five. So then do the same thing on top. What's 11.25 divided by five? Mm -hmm. $2.25 for one shirt. Okay, the next one says, if Apollo sold 142 shirts over the weekend, then how much money did he earn? Okay, so money and shirts. We just figured out that for one shirt, it's $2.25. So then if he sells 142 shirts, where do I put that 142? Yeah, on the bottom, because that's where shirts is. And then I can figure out how much money it is. Always go towards the direction of your unknown. So go this way. One times what is 142? Yeah, 142. So then multiply this by 142. And what's 2.25 times 142? It's $319.50. Okay. Um, now here's the one downside to this. What if for some reason I got the wrong unit rate? Well, then I'm using that unit rate to find this and now I miss this one too. So if you're really confident on this, great, use that one. But essentially um, you could have used any of these values from the table right? Like I could have put five shirts cost 1125. So then how much is 142? And I could have solved the proportion that way. Just throwing that out there as an option. Okay. No matter what point you use, I just want to point out no matter what point you use, you still would have gotten the same answer. Okay. Um, we have this double number line and it's asking me use this double number line that shows the ratio of dogs to cats to find this missing number. So if I want to find that missing number, I need to move this way. What did they do to the two to get to the 16? Yeah, they multiplied by eight. So then multiply three times eight and you get 24. A double number line is just another way of representing um, a proportion or two ratios that equal to each other. So solve it the same way. Okay, um, last four. It says there are 24 boys in um, Mr. Howard's band. And if the ratio of boys, so first number is representing the boys, that's six, to girls, second number is girls, and that's seven. Um, how many girls are there in Mr. Howard's band? Hmm. Well, um, I don't know how many girls, so that's my unknown. But the other thing they told me was there was 24 boys. So if I want to go solve for that, move towards the direction of that, then move this way, how do you go from 6 to 24? Yeah, you multiply by 4. 
So then do seven times four and you get 28. So there are 28 girls when there are 24 boys. Last three. It says that the ratio of girls, so first number would be girls in that ratio, which is five, to boys, so the bottom number is boys, and the second number would be the boys, is five to three. Um, then what if there's 15 boys in the choir, how many girls are there? So I'm solving for the amount of girls, and they told me there was 15 boys. Okay, so move towards the direction of your unknown. So go that way. Three times what is 15? Yeah, times five. So five times five is, you guessed it, 25. So there'd be 25 girls when there's 15 boys. Last two. Okay, um, this one says that there is the ratio of red to black cards is three to four. Okay, so we got red to black is three to four. And then it tells me there's a total of 42 cards, so how many of them are red? This is tricky. Okay, so what I need to do is, since they told me the total, I'm gonna have to use that amount. Okay, so there's a total of 42. And when there's 42 total, we wanna know how many of them are red. Okay, so how many of them are red when there's 42 total? I can use this to set up my other proportion. When there's three red, how many total are there? Well, when there's three red, there's four black, right? So there's three red and four black for a total of how many cards? Seven. So when there's three red, there's a total of seven cards. So then how many red cards will there be when there's 42 total? See how I did that? Okay, move towards the direction of your unknown. So move this way. How do you go from seven to 42? Yeah, you multiply by six. So three times six is 18. So when there's 42 total cards, there's gonna be 18 red cards. Perfect. Okay, if you haven't tried this one like on your own, try it first. Okay, this one says that there um, is a total of 54 students, okay? And the ratio of boys so that first number is the boys, which is four, to girls is four to five. So girls is on the bottom and it's four to five. So the bottom number is representing the girls. How many girls, so I'm gonna be asked to solve for the amount of girls are signed up for the swim team. And then the only other thing they told me was the total is 54. Okay, so this is the ratio I have to use. So I have to use this information to help me set up my other one, going from girls to total. Well, they in this other one, I do know there's five girls, but when there's five girls, how many total students are there? Well, when there's five girls, there's four boys for a total of, you guessed it, nine students. So when there's five girls, there's nine total students. Use that information to then figure out how many girls there'll be when there's a total of 54. So move towards the direction of your unknown. So go this way, nine times what is 54? Yes, six. So five times six is going to give you 30. So there will be 30 girls when there's a total of 54 students because they're in a ratio of four to five. Um, if you got all those right, congratulations. These were pretty tough. Um, go back and review the ones you missed and then try some um, similar problems to them in your packet. You got this. You're going to do great.